the Marine recruiter looked at me and said, the only thing I can guarantee you is boot camp and then going to war in Vietnam. I had to convince my mother and father to sign for me since I was a minor. After two and a half months of walking, uh, one morning I couldn't get up. Uh, I couldn't put no weight on my leg. And my uh, guards came up to me and one uh, chambered around and put the AK-47 on my head. And he told me in Vietnamese, you get up or I'm going to kill you. And uh, to be quite honest with you, I didn't think I could. And I started singing the uh, Marine Corps hymn and got up and walked and made it to a prisoner of war camp that was on the uh, Vietnam uh, Laotian border uh, in, in the jungles of South Vietnam. When I got through the door, I looked to the left-hand side and there was Hal Kushner, Dave Harker, uh, Tom Davis, Ike McMillan, Daly, Lewis, uh, Feaster, and there was probably two or three others. Dennis Hammond, a sergeant in the Marine Corps. And I could and I looked at them and I said to myself, oh my God. They looked absolutely emaciated. I mean, uh, I knew they were Americans and they were grinning at me and I was grinning at them. And, uh, Hal Kushner asked me who I was and I told him. He said, well, have a seat. And he says, how are you? And uh, the interpreter walked out and left me there and I started talking to them and come to find out some of them had been five, there five years or longer. We uh, flew into Da Nang, and I remember this just like if it happened five minutes ago. They dropped the tailgate. We ran out the back, and I think I took three steps, and the rockets started coming in. That rocket attack lasted about 20 minutes, and that was my first five minutes in combat. That was probably the first time that I asked myself, what did I get myself into? So backing up, you walked three months on a badly wounded foot before they finally stopped at the, at the camp where you were finally in prison. Correct? Yes, sir. And, and all that time without a boot on that foot and it was becoming infected along the way. Yes, sir. And you, and you continued on. What happened when you got to the camp? I made the 26th prisoner that was held by that uh, Vietnamese unit of which out of those 26, only 12 survived and I'm one of them after two years in, in the jungles in South Vietnam. And there was no doubt in, in this type of an environment, and it's nothing more than an extension of the formal French prison system that was there when they occupied the country, that they had all the time in the world to devote to indoctrination and humiliation, beating you, and just basically uh, humiliating you. The only way you were going to die there is that they shot you. And we had all come to the conclusion that we would never do anything unless something went terribly bad that, that would lead up to that. My actual release was postponed four times because of breaks in the uh, peace talks. And finally one day they came in there and they gave us these clothes and said, put it on, and gave us a bag, and said, you're going home, and I said, you're going, I ain't believing this. But, but anyway, they stuck us on a bus that had all the windows covered, and we drove, and they opened the doors to the bus, and as I got off the bus, I looked off to the right side, and there was uh, an Air Force C-141 hospital uh, airplane jet. Standing there on the left-hand side, there was an uh, Air Force general, and a couple of colonels, and then about every North Vietnamese dignitary that there ever was in the country was standing there. And we had to go up there and salute that general and shake this Air Force Colonel's hand. And they would say to you, walk very briskly to that airplane. And they didn't have to tell me twice. They said, don't run, but walk briskly. Got to the door, uh, there was uh, Air Force flight nurses on there. 
and they put us in the seats and they hugged us and told us welcome home and kissed us and gave us cigarettes and beer and candy and we're taxiing. Next thing I know the front end of the plane goes up and I'm looking down like this and as it banks hard to the left I looked out the window and I saw the last time I ever saw North Vietnam and I was glad, very glad. 